Michael Barnard and this is Indie Film Industry News. We gather information from experts in the independent film industry to help filmmakers achieve success with their movies. Today's guest is Hal Corky Kessler. Corky is an attorney with the Chicago law firm Deutsch, Levy and Engel and is recognized as an expert in several aspects of independent filmmaking, especially specific financing issues. Welcome, Corky. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Michael. Well, where is the money? And you have some information about a, uh, a new part of the IRS section. Actually, it's a renewed part that can help find the money. What is that? Well, um, I, it started October 22nd of 2004, Michael, and a bunch of filmmakers believed that um, projects were going outside of the United States. And they came to me and they said, do you think our federal government would ever give us an incentive to try and keep films and television in the United States? And I told them when they first came, it was about 2001, 2002, I said, get out of my office. <laughs> I said, there's no way the United States can compete uh, with the other foreign countries that were giving great incentives. And, and, and realistically, studios, smaller studios, production companies, and many other companies in the business were shutting down. Their business was leaving the United States. So these filmmakers came back and talked to me again, and they said, there's something that's going on that's called the American Jobs Creation Act of 2004 and we have some senators that are going to be very positively moving forward with our vision to help uh, independent filmmakers and these senators are not in film states which was brilliant because if you're going to have someone to support an incentive federally for film and television you don't want the senators to come from film and television states because they would think they were self-serving their own constituents. So it was Lincoln, it was Snow, it was Hatch, and I forget who the fourth senator were, uh, was, and they came and they sponsored what was called the Federal Incentives 181, Section 181 of the American Jobs Creation Act of 2004. And it took effect October 22nd, 2004. And it's been extended and extended and extended and extended. And the last extension, I, which happened January of 2013, went back and picked up all of 2012 when it had expired. And it's through the end of this year. What it does, and uh, basically, it is the goose that laid the golden egg to some extent. Uh, what it does, it allows any taxpayer, company or individual in the United States, when they invest in film or television and the producer spends their money, it's 100% loss. So you could f principally wipe out someone's federal tax liability by investing in a qualified film or television and you can go up to a maximum of 15 or 20 million dollars per picture and up to 15 or 20 million dollars per episode for television times 44 episodes wow okay so if you want to find out how you can get investors who will have tax benefits by investing with you come back in one moment Welcome back. We're talking about tax benefits for your investors and the Section 181 tax benefit actually is one of the only good results of the recent sequestration debacle that many consider it in Congress. What happened? And also the fiscal cliff the last time debacle. Um, I reasonably think 
that this will be the last year. Hmm. I, I don't see, foresee it being extended again. It, it's not so simple as just let's extend section 181. Um, and it's a lot of details, and really now is not the time to go into it. But you can't just say, let's extend 181. It's much more complicated. Um, so all the films that qualify must be grandfathered by the end of this year. And once they're grandfathered, they will be 181 qualified movies forever. They can get money in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and continue on their 181 qualified movies. To be qualified, 75% of your service wages in your budget have to be performed and paid in the United States. But they don't have to be United States citizens. You, hmm. you can bring people in from whatever country as long as they perform and they get paid in this country. 25% of the service wages in your budget can be for, performed and paid anywhere that you want. So that makes co-producing, co-funding in countries like China and the like perfect because you can go to China and say, this is a great project. It's going to make a lot of money in China at your theaters. We want 25% from you because we want to preserve the 181 for the investors here and you can still qualify. The other qualifying factor is it cannot be a sexually explicit movie or television project. However, you can simulate sex, and mm. that's fine. So as long as you do those things, you qualify subject to your accountant properly doing the accounting for 181 and declaring your movie or television project as a 181 uh, qualifying project at the first tax return for the project because if they don't elect it at the first time that they file they cannot then take advantage of it it's lost so it's um, 2013 I'm an independent filmmaker I have a reasonable motion picture project uh, budget maybe 10 million dollars I go to an investor who says I'll invest 1 million dollars in your movie what do I tell them they can get back because of Section 181? Well, first of all, they don't get any benefits until you spend the money. So it's spending that really triggers it. Um, I tell my clients they should not talk about it. They should <laughs> introduce the topic to these investors and let me talk to them or let somebody else t uh, do that, that conversation because I'm fearful that you might say something that's really not so accurate and then I have to backtrack and we're going to lose a little credibility in that. So I have my clients ju just introduce the topic and then let me talk to them or their tax advisors. Um, it, it, it is really an unbelievable start. The highest tax bracket today is 39%. So if you give a million dollars to a project and that's spent in 2013, and you're a 39% tax payer, I've given you a tax credit of $390,000. Hmm. If you can't use it all in that year, you can go back two years or for 22 years, but you're starting out with a 39% benefit. If you go to any one of the 41 states that have good, meaningful incentives from the state, and New York happens to be one of the several very good states, um, you can guarantee your investor a recovery, a recovery of their money, regardless of any sale or distribution, of 50 to 77 cents on every dollar that they invest. And there's no other business in the United States that you can make that promise to. Wow. So it's complicated enough that this is a uh, kids don't try this at home type of situation. But, but if I come to a professional who won't get me in hot water like I would. Um, well, I'm not saying that you would. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, I'm <laughs> saying that you might just say something. That's well, the not, one thing that would be said wrong. Yeah. Um, then it actually is, it makes the movie project very attractive to investors. Yeah, the investors still are at risk 
uh, that 25 to, to, to 50 cents per dollar, but it takes away the comment that investors make. I invested in that movie and I got nothing. Hmm. You can guarantee them that they'll get something and they'll get something sub substantial. So you start out by looking at, look, we've got some advantages to get investors. People who've never invested in film are now investing in film because of this tremendous head start that they get. Now, you can talk about um, completion bonds, uh, you, you, uh, you can talk about pre-sales, uh, you can talk about a lot of things that makes you in a profit before you shoot a, a film. I have a client uh, that has a movie that was $1.8 million budget. Um, uh, 181, 39 percent, five pre-sales that got him 1.3 million dollars from five countries in pre-sales, and the incentive in the state of 25 percent, he was in a profit to his investors before he shot a single scene of the movie. That sounds attractive. All right, so I have um, I have a movie project. It's 2013. Um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to go into production before 2013 ends, but I've got some interest. I've got a script. How do I grandfather my option to use Section 181? Uh, you need a screenplay. You need a budget. You need the investor documents for for people to invest, and you need one day of photography with some dialogue. One day of, one photography. Day of photography. with some dialogue from your screenplay. However, your budget can change, your screenplay can change, your one day doesn't need to stay in the movie, and your investor documents can change as to all the amounts that it needs to take. So it's a very fluid process, but in my file, I want a budget, I want a screenplay, I want the investor documents, but you don't need investors. You just need the investor documents, hmm. and I want that one day of photography with some dialogue, which my client will date and time stamp that I have in my file. What about uh, entity? Corporate entity, LLC, does uh, that oh, matter? Well, I typically do an LLC. Okay. Uh, uh, be, because you're, you're not going to get investors typically through a corporation. You would get them in through a limited liability company. Um, so there's an expense. Uh, there's an expense, uh, 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 well, the expense to get the investor documents. Um, there's a, a, an expense to do the budget, I assume. The screenplay, if it's your screenplay, there's no expense there. And one day, you get your, your mini cam, your camera, you go in front of a tree, you put a guy talking to the tree, in front of the tree. If the guy talking to the tree is a page in the screenplay they have in my file, oh, we're fine. You don't need the actor to stay in the movie, you don't need the shot to stay in the movie, but it's got to be a day of photography with dialogue that appears in the screenplay that I have. So section 181 is a real benefit for filmmakers and the investors in the film. It might end at the end of two th 2013, which it, it's been it a battle every year. It will end. But uh, we can grandfather our chance to, make, to use Section 181 right. by taking the steps you just pointed right. out. Right. Great. And, th and there's another incentive that has nothing to do with, with 181, and this incentive does not sunset. It's a section 199, and 199 is the income return section. Film and television is deemed a manufacturer, and as such, any taxable money that is returned to you as an investor, you get a 9% discount. So if I return to you $1, of taxable income, you only pay tax on 91 cents. Now that's, so the 181 is before you even make the movie, you are in essential, you're essentially setting up the investor for tax benefits 
even before the movie goes anywhere. Uh, 181 is spending, and 181 creates a loss. Wow. Now, you've spent, you've got a loss, and that aspect will probably sunset at the end of this year, which is not going to sunset, and it, ha it, is, it has nothing to do with 181, and it's on the books and will be there and has been there, is that film and television is deemed a manufacturer. And as such, any taxable dollar that I return to you, you only pay tax on 91 cents. There's wow. a 9% discount. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Corky. It's been a real pleasure. It's my I, pleasure. I find that very informative. And you can find out through your professionals, such as Corky, how to take your investors through Section 181 and Section 199 when they start telling you that they don't want to invest in movies. You might have a leg up by taking advantage of this. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, Michael. We will come back with another episode of Indie Film Industry News.